As if you didn't need another reason to dislike Prosecutor Love. She allegedly allowed an autistic boy die in Fulton County Jail. Let's hear about it. This is from The Appeal, and the headline says, Medical staff at Notorious Atlanta Jail let autistic teen waste away and die, lawsuit says. Now, why do I blame Ms. Love? Because she is ultimately responsible for keeping him there. At 15, Shane Kendall, an autistic child with bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, and intellectual impairment allegedly fatally shot his mother, which is a tragic incident. His father is on his son's side. It was a terrible, terrible accident. Despite Kendall's disabilities, prosecutors charged him as an adult with murder. Before he turned 19, he died at the Fulton County Jail. During the last years of his life, Shane Kendall, an autistic teenager, was locked up inside Atlanta's notoriously dangerous Fulton County Jail. In an interview, his parents told the appeal that when Shane turned 18, he was sent to the adult unit, Big Boy Jail, as he called it. He wouldn't survive a year. On January 31st, 2021, roughly a month before his 19th birthday, officers found Shane curled up in a ball on the floor of his cell according to a wrongful death suit his father who goes by joel filed earlier this year the suit alleges that shane has to be placed in a different cell but when the officer denied shane's request he assaulted his cellmate who later reported that shane told him he'd start a fight because he wanted to get out of the cell god then gave shane a notice that he was facing 48 days of disciplinary lockdown Essentially, a 24-hour day solitary confinement, according to the complaint. The next morning, officers found Shane unresponsive from an apparent uh, self-ending attempt. Joe suit alleges that the jail's medical providers, employed by for by the for-profit coffin company, NAFCare, failed to render life-saving care and neglected his medical needs throughout his incarceration. The suit names Knife Care, two medical providers, several sheriff's office employees, Fulton County, and its sheriff, Patrick Labatt, as defendants. I would actually, but here's the thing Ms. Love, as prosecutor, is probably immune, even though I, I personally hold her directly responsible for this. When the nurse arrived at his cell, she refused to perform CPR saying she had a bad knee, according to officers' reports, with one officer noting that he was alarmed by the nurse's refusal. Well, nurse, whoever you are, why are you a nurse? Well, why are you a nurse at all? And if you have a bad knee, if you can't provide your nursing capabilities, then off you screw. Give the position to somebody who actually wants to perform their job. The physician's assistant, who arrived more than 10 minutes after staff discovered Shane's body, was described as disoriented in one supervisor's report. Unlike the nurse, he brought an automated external defibrillator, which recomm recommended no shock, according to the complaint. NAFCARE has faced similar accusations of neglect from incarcerated patients and their loved ones. In the last five years, the company has been sued more than 300 times in federal court. But despite the ongoing controversy surrounding the for-profit company, Fulton County Commissioners on November 15, last year, voted to renew the contract through the end of 2024. From January 1st, through December 31st, 2024, Fulton County will pay NAFCARE more than $33 million. I assume those $33 million are the cheapest they can get. 
The country also recently recognized the quote, NAFCAR team of healthcare heroes for going above and beyond to save lives during a serious incident at the jail, end quote. Really? Really? I would say that is, uh, oh, there are bad press. Let's create some good press to counter it. Screw you. Fulton County Chairman Rob Pitt said in a, pre said in a press release posted on NAFCAR's website, the medical providers were awarded the Fulton County Chairman's Award. <laughs> His own award. Oh, he is ultimately responsible for keeping hiring them, and then he gives them an award. So, for some reason, that should make everything go away. No. No. In court filings, NAFCARE has denied all wrongdoings in Shane's case, and all and asked the court to dismiss the complaint. The sheriff and county have also filed motions to dismiss. The court has not yet ruled on their motions. The Fulton County Sheriff's Office, which operates in the L, told the appeal in an email that it does not comment on pending litigation and would not say if the medical providers were still employed at the jail. That means they are. The office of the Fulton County Attorney emailed the munis municipality had no comment in response to the question sent by the appeal. Attorneys for NAFCAR did not respond to requests for comment. Shane's parents hope their lawsuit will help protect others at the jail. I sadly won't count on it because it seems like Fulton County Jail and the people who run it have no souls. They are uh, probably going to church as everybody else, but they are completely empty inside. It's not just about Shane. There are so many lives in there. Shane's stepmom, Ma Margie Thorpe, totally appeal. The fact that we still co contract with this medical company to take care of these people or not take care of them is a crime. That's giving gov government money. That's ta taxpayers' money. And remember, Shane, presumed innocent until trial. Shane's criminal defense attorney, Rachel Kaufman, who also represents Shane's dad in the civil suit, told the appeal that the teen should never have been sold to the Fulton County Jail. In addition to autism, a developmental disability, Shane has been diagnosed with bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, ADHD, and intellectual impairment, according to medical and court records. Kaufman's co-counsel in the criminal case, Daniel Kane, told the court during Shane's first competency hearing that Shane was hallucinating during one of their initial meetings. Kane testified that during his 40-plus year career, he had only raised concern about clients' competency in three cases at the Fulton County Jail. Shane reported to medical staff that he experienced visual hallucination when in closed spaces. Hello, Mr. Jingles. Hello. Say hello to the audience. Say hello. Jingles, say hello to the audience. Jingles. <laughs> say hello to the audience. Yeah. Hello. Hello, audience. Hello, audience. Oh, he looks so happy with me right now. Um, yeah. Uh, Joe testified that he never expected Shane to be able to live independently. He said the teen had received therapeutic service, services since he was a toddler. He had a list of mental problems as long as your arm, and they have been documented since birth, Joe told the appeal. When Shane was less than a week old, he was placed in foster care and went to live with Joe and his ex-wife. They adopted him a couple of years later. If there is ever anyone who should have been treated as a mentally ill person rather than a criminal, then it's Shane Kendall, Joe said. And here is the lawsuit in itself. If this video gets recognized enough, I will do a reading of that. So hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, comment below that you want to see more about this. At 15, Shane allegedly picked up a loaded gun left out at his adoptive mother's house. She and Joe had split up years earlier and fatally shot her, said Kaufman. Joel did not receive his medication when he stayed at his mother's house, according to Joel's complaint. Despite his well-documented history of psychiatric and developmental disabilities, the Fulton County District Attorney's Office charged him as an adult with murder and other offenses. 
Kaufman told the appeal she begged and pleaded with the prosecutors, then under the leadership of former Fulton County District Attorney Paul Howard, to agree to have him placed in a psychiatric hospital. But they fought me every step of the way, end quote. At the first competency hearing, Assistant District Attorney Adrian Love accused Kane and Shane's father of lying about Shane's disabilities. All his life, medical records throughout his life. And Adrian Love claimed they were lying. I cannot with words describe my dislike of Adrian Love. And remember, this happened before Fanny Willis took office. I believe. Because this happened in 29. I want to say it's 2019. At 15, yeah, 2019. Adrian, blah, blah, blah. Which prompted Kane to file a motion for the court to find her in contempt. Kane told their appeal that Love's accusation, accusations were completely unethical. Yeah, I agree. When you have all these medical history, all these medical records, and claim they are lying, she's only saying that in hope to persuade the judge to get him in jail and apparently she succeeded i don't know who the judge was but i sure as crap hopes that person is no longer a judge but i assume he is or she during a closing arguments at shane's first competency hearing love said that shane's legal team was quote trying to get you to feel sorry for shane kendall jesus christ you cold-hearted b b b you have no soul, Adrian Love. You can do this and then walk out and be a normal human being if you argue like this. You can't. Maybe that's why she's so angry all the time, because she has nothing inside. No soul whatsoever. Let's see here. Quote, he's had all of these problems, Love said. I'm not saying he hasn't had a hard life. I'm saying he's competent to stand trial and they haven't proven otherwise. Hallucinations, autism, everything in between. Seriously. She told the jury that his medical history and diagnosis were, quote, irrelevant in proving, quote, unquote, whether or not he was competent to stand trial and that he was only at a psychiatric facility, quote, because his parents have lobbied to keep him there and the state hasn't objected, end quote. You are not a human being, Miss Love. You cannot be a human being because hum humans have souls. You do not. However, the 2018 court order that sent Shane to the facility states that a psychiatrist found Shane incompetent. See? That should be the end of the story. Both counsel for the defendant and counsel for the state agreed that the defendant should be transferred to the facility for psychiatric treatment to see whether restoration of competency can occur. Yeah, because um, all these can be cured? No. I mean... He will always have autism. He will always be bipolar. He will always, or, well, not anymore, but he will always have these. The feeling of restoring competency, that's just a middle management kind of way to claim, yeah, now we can stand trial. It's a bogus thing. At the end of Love's closing, she said she'd like to, quote, add a little levity, unquote, into the proceedings and told the jury she liked cartoons and comics bo comic books. No. She then played an excerpt of more of, from one of the Spider-Man movies in an apparent attempt to underscore her argument that Shane was malingering. No. Jesus Christ. First of all, 
if you are playing from one of the Spider-Man movies without the license, you just committed uh, copyright uh, fraud or copyright, whatever it call, it's called. Kaufman did not make similar att attempts at, quote, levity, quote, unquote, in her closing remarks. Quote, I am boiling with anger and frustration, she told the jury. How low are we going to go? And the state is go willing to go pretty low. The state's default position has been to win at all costs, to ignore ethics, morality. That hearing ended in a hum jury. Kaufman said she hoped the prosecutors would change course and not retry the case. Instead, they took Shane to trial again. This time, the jury found incompetent to stand trials. Why is this handled by laymen? Why? How can a jury find this? They do not have the medical expertise to find this. This should be a matter of law, not as a matter of uh, as a fact finder. This is stupid. And Miss Love, you I bet you you know it's wrong. I bet you you know it's wrong, but you do it anyways because you are so empty inside. You are so soulless. So you fill it with garbage in order to feel something. If it's maybe it's enjoyment for you, Miss Love. Maybe it's enjoyment for you. Maybe you go home with to your and uh, in the shower with a pulsating shower head and think about this. I don't know. You have no soul. And the jury? Jesus Christ. I hope I hope you read anyone anyone in that jury, if you show if you are watching this, apologize. Go to church immediately, tell your priest that you did a fundamental evil thing. Fundamental evil thing and beg for forgiveness. Beg for it. Kane said he won't love what would happen if Shane went to jail. Quote, I told Adrian, I told her, this guy is not going to make it. He will not live, he said. And damned if I wasn't right, if he goes to jail, I said something will happen. Shane's case breaks my heart every day, Kane said. I wake up with it in the middle of the night. Love, who stayed in the prosecutor's office after Fanny Willis defeated Howard in, the 2020, in 2020, is now the chief deputy district attorney for the high-profile cases and difficult witness division. She did not respond to request for comment. But maybe she was busy in the shower. While Willis has become a darling for, of some democratic circles for using the state racketing law to prosecute former president and several of his associates, she has also drawn fierce criticism for using that same law against musicians. And now they are going into the Young Thug trial. Yeah. Horrible. Horrible. Yeah, and then they go into uh, lyrics, which, by the way, uh, the uh, Georgia Supreme Court said, uh-uh, can't do that, but George Glanville doesn't care. Maybe it's because he has no spine, and he's a coward, and he is too afraid to stand up against soulless mislove. Here's the thing. Okay. After a psychiatrist found Shane incompetent, the court sent him to an inpatient program that attempts to make children ready to stand trial after they've been deemed unfit. According to program records, staff provided Shane with a crash course in courtroom procedures. One staff member testified at the first competency hearing that Shane and the other clients did crossword puzzles, word searches, coloring books, and a game called competency football, where they tossed the football as they were quizzed on different vocabulary words. Kaufman told the jury the program was akin to obedience training. Thorpe said the staff treated Shane like a Pavlovian dog and gave him cookies when he answered questions correctly, but at least they knew he was safe. We got to visit him in person. We got to hug, we got to hug one another. By the time he completed the program, he was 17 years old. The court then sent him to Fulton County Jail, where he stayed until his death. As of last, last month, 21 17 year olds were detained at the jail, according to the sheriff's office. So, this happened at 15. Completed the program at 17. Then he was in jail. 
until he was almost 19 without trial. Remember that Fannie Willis got funds from the federal government. The fe she got federal, federal funds and extra money to, pro to clear the docket. This is one of the, the cases that didn't get to trial because Fannie Willis chose to screw with the married man, lie in church, and RICO trials. This boy might have still been alive if they actually chose to move forward with actual uh, trials. And I do not believe there would be, have been enough evidence to convict this boy. So, congratulations, Fanny Willis. Your inability, your incompetence, this boy is dead. Congratulations to Adrian Love, who I believe is the person who has the most responsibility because she pulled this together in order to get this boy into jail where he died. And you knew, Miss Love, all along, you knew. And you did nothing because you have no soul. His medical records show that NAFCAS staff was, was aware of his diagnosis and his stay at the psychiatric facility. However, workers placed him in the general population unit according to a housing assignment form completed by a registered nurse at the jail. In his court filing, NAFCAR claims their staff did not assign Shane to general population housing. So, NAFCAR lied to the court. And, quote, there was so much evidence that he was not fit for that jail, Kaufman said. During the 2020 campaign for sheriff, Joe and Thorpe spoke to Sheriff Labatt, who was running to unseat the incumbent on several occasions about their concerns for Shane, according to Joe's la lawsuit. The complaint state that because the pair believed that Labatt would help mentally ill detainees at the jail, they campaigned for him and donated to his election campaign. After Labatt took office in January of 2021, he visited Shane at the jail. Thorpe texted Labatt to thank him, according to, to the complaint. Shane Sounded like a light vest was just thrown to him. She texted. A few weeks later, Shane was dead. Joe and Thorpe uh, relied on video calls to stay connected while Shane was at the Fulton County Yale. Sometimes Shane asked them to play music on their calls. He liked that song, Happy. And he said, put happy on. Y'all dance. Joe and Thorpe feared for their son's safety and for good reason. The complaint says other detainees physically assaulted and bullied Shane because of his perceived sexual orientation. Joe said his son never went to the exercise yard because he was afraid. Not a breath of frozen air, not sunlight. While at the jail, Shane lost a significant amount of weight, even though he was on psychiatric medications that typically cause weight gain, according to the complaint. complaint. His health, health records from the jail show he lost 57 pounds in less than a year but mental health clinicians rarely mention his weight loss in their notes. Thorpe says the jail's meals couldn't sustain him. Shane had told her that breakfast delivered at about 1 a.m. and shoved under the door. By the time he went to eat it, he said that bugs had crawled into his food. Yeah, Fulton County Jail is famous, infamous, for the, a man, a date detainee, died more or less eaten alive by bed bugs. Remember, folks, people in Fulton County Jail are awaiting trial and are presumed innocent. Quote, at every turn they fail to keep him safe, said Young, who suspects his son may not have died by self-ending. God say Shane was found with a ligature around his neck, but at the first competency hearing, Joe said that at 15, last time Shane was free, the state of Georgia had paid for an occupational therapist to teach Shane how to tie his shoes and complete other tasks, such as brushing his teeth and bathing. He was in grave danger every second, Joe said, of Shane's time at the jail. 
Shane's medical records also reveal he repeatedly refused his mental health medication, was physically assaulted by another detainee, and on several occasions wore dirty uniforms and appeared unkempt. I did not take a shower, he told one mental health professional. I take a bird bath. I've seen things happen to people in the shower. Joe said he spoke to Shane the night before his body was found. He said, I gotta go. I got in kind of an emergency I got to take care of. And so he hung up. Less than 12 hours later, Shane was pronounced dead. The Yale's incident reports list a contradictory timeline for that morning and raised significant concerns about the medical assistance or lack thereof that he received. In the reports, officers provide different times for when Shane's body was discovered, ranging from 6 a.m. to 6.10 a.m. Not that big of a difference. The time also varies from when they call for medical assistance, from about 6.12 a.m. to 6.17 a.m. One officer said that he called for medical aid after staff entered the cell, removed the ligature, handcuffed Shane due to officer safety precautions, and began CPR. The medical providers' reports are brief, each less than 10 sentences. They say that officers called for medical assistance about 6 10 a.m., but made, made no mention of their arrival times or whether the nurse refused to perform CPR. Surveillance video captured the corridor outside Shell's, Shane's cell that morning. Two staff members appeared to discover Shane's body at 6 10 a.m., according to footage viewed by the appeal. Over the next several minutes, staff members can see in, be seen walking away and towards Shane's cell with no apparent sense of urgency. At about 6.20 a.m., a staff member wheels a stretcher towards the cell with another person walking several steps behind. About two minutes later, a person in a lab, lab coat can be seen walking towards the cell. At 6.36, people who appear to be emergency medical workers walk towards the cell. About 30 minutes later, Shane was pronounced dead, according to the supervisor's report. Twenty-six minutes, and nobody gave him medical attention for 26 minutes. NAFCARE has been accused of providing dangerously inadequate care to other detainees in Fulton County. In August, a man detained at the jail sued NAFCARE, Labatt, and others. When he first arrived at the jail in May of 2023, he spent three days in a holding cell covered with urine and feces with about 30 other detainees, he wrote. He alleged that he was then placed with the general population instead of in the alternative lifestyle dorm, or even after he disclosed to officers that he was gay. While in the general population wing, a detainee sexually assaulted him and who extorted for commissary items according to his handwritten complaint. He alleged that food is, quote, often served half-cooked, raw, and always cold. Locks on the doors are broken, and there was a bed bug infestation in September. On the medical side, he said that he had to wait a month before receiving his HIV medications, and that even after three months at the jail, he had not yet received all his mental health medications. and other and other and other so far this year 10 detainees in the custody of the Fulton County Sheriff's Office have died when was this written I don't know when it was written. It doesn't say here. December 18th, 2023. So 10 people last year. Not counting the people who were stabbed. So, why do I bring notice to this? Because sadly, it seems like very few others do. And I'm covering the Young Thug trial. The Young Thug defendants are in the Fulton County Jail. Now, what do you, what do you, yeah, go, where do you go from this, for this? 
you who uh, watch my show. Is this acceptable? If not, like, share, subscribe. Talk to me in the comments. Tell me if you want to know more about the Fulton County Jail and everything that's been going on there. Let me know and I will do more. And by me doing more, you can do more. And we can bring this up to attention to a larger audience. Thank you all for listening. Until next time, hug your family. Unless your family is crap, then screw them and give your love to the people who deserve it. Okay? See you. Bye-bye.